I previously made a tutorial video on world generation in Python and I applied it in Pygame using the noise library to create hills and whatnot but it was two dimensional and I used one dimensional noise meaning that I would give it like an x value and it would return the height value or it was, it was just a value from negative one to one but I used it as a height value. And people have been asking me uh, many times to make a video doing the same thing with two-dimensional noise where you give an x and a y value and then you make a map out of that. In this case, the value returned I'm using for the height again. But in this case, since I'm giving an x and a y value, there's more dimensions to the whole thing. Within Pygame, normally the application would be top down, but I had a little bit of fun and went the extra mile and made a sloppy 3D renderer with fog and everything and made this. So I'll briefly go over how the rendering works, but this video is mostly supposed to be focusing on how the terrain generation works so you can implement something like this in your game. The first thing to remember about using Perlin noise or any kind of noise for terrain generation is that it's all about creativity. And this goes for any use case for noise in general. There's so many different ways you can use it. In the past, I've used noise to make like a fire animation and you can use it for all sorts of things. I also used it in my game The Crushed Sky to make the text box appear as a nice visual effect. With terrain generation, the main idea for the most simplest implementation is to just take the value returned by the noise and use it for a height map. You can also do things like mixing it with multiple layers of noise where one layer determines, say, the biome, for example, and another layer determines the height map. And then you can mix it with all sorts of other things. So you could have a noise layer for doing vegetation. So some areas have more vegetation than other and the transition is smooth and natural. And you can write in all sorts of logical rules into that as well and use different types of noise, all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, I'll, I'll go over the rendering for this thing first and I'll leave a timestamp on screen so you can skip to the part where I go over the terrain generation if you're just interested in that but uh, the rendering stuff should be pretty quick. So in the past, I made a sloppy rendering system in Pygame that just draws polygons. And then it just uses this function to project three dimensional points onto the screen by just taking the angle of the point to the supposed camera and using that as a rendering location on your screen. I also have some other utility functions. I didn't use the rotational ones. Uh, the main one I use here is just offsetting polygons. So my polygons are made up of just a list of points in three dimensional space. So the offset function just offsets all of those points for every point in the polygon based on all of the values of the offset. So I, I don't use any of the rotational stuff as you can see in my code here, I commented that out. So it's really just offsetting a bunch of polygons and then using this function for rendering. The movement's done by updating this position. And I have this function for the generation itself. I'll get to that in a bit. This is the main game loop. I have some random spaghetti in here for doing fog and motion blur. That's handled by this surface. I render the rectangles or polygons or whatever from back to front. And as I go through the layers, which I can tell by index, I'll just throw in the background surface, which is just blue with some transparency. So it just kind of fades out that layer, well, everything that was behind it a bit. And I do it multiple times so the stuff up front is clearer. The clouds were also some messy magic here. I copied the rendered version of the polygon, did some flipping and threw it up upside down at the top of the screen, changed the color and then also added a rule for whether or not it should be shown based on the depth of it. Anything that would be considered water would not end up becoming a cloud. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using the main hills as the clouds. Right here I'm also normalizing the height of the hills and the clouds so the clouds look a lot flatter but they're still textured. This is similar to the type of thing I'm talking about when I say you need to be creative with noise. You can do stuff like this as well. So not only am I using the noise for the hills and the water and whatnot, I'm using it for the clouds by reflecting it up, up into the sky. This right here is just for the motion blur stuff. And that's mostly it for rendering. It's just built off of a system of polygons. 
And that is a little bit important for the way I process the data when I generate the map. So yeah, now I'm going to move on to the part that uses the Python noise library to generate the map for this. It's actually generated as needed as uh, the camera moves. It'll add new rows and remove from the stuff that's past the camera, but that, that's not particularly important here. This is just a single function that generates a single row of the polygons. So I've got 30 polygons in each row. So you can think of that as 30 things across the X axis. So first thing I do is I make a copy of the base square polygon, which if you look right here, it's just a bunch of values with an absolute side length of one. So the area of this polygon is going to be one by default. So I make a copy of that polygon since I don't want to modify the original reference here. Uh, I offset it for the purpose of generating the terrain. This isn't particularly important for the noise part. But here's the part where it gets interesting and you can see how I use noise to create this terrain. I have this variable here which determines whether or not the polygon is a water polygon. And I have this variable here that determines the depth of the water in the case that it is a water polygon. You'll see why I have this variable in a moment here. So when I create each polygon, which you can see I always create 30, and when I create the polygon, I have to determine the height of the polygon and also the color of it and the heights of the different points. Because if I run this again, you notice the polygons aren't flat. Even though my square is a square, if you look at this map right here, you can see that these are not squares. They're actually polygons. And the shapes of the polygons vary. And that, yeah, that's just because I'm changing the height of the corners. So I go through every corner in the polygon, which is just these values. But remember, they're already offset to be in the correct location based on where that row is being generated and where that polygon is within that row. But yeah, for each corner, I, this is where I'm using the Perlin noise. I use pnoise2, which is the two-dimensional Perlin noise function. If you actually do, if you actually do import noise into Python and you do help noise, this is where you can find the documentation for it. And uh, funny enough, a lot of people miss this. If you um, like, if you just glance at the main documentation, it doesn't give you much information. But this is where all the documentation is essentially. So you can see right here, there's pnoise one, pnoise two, and in my previous tutorial on world generation, I used pnoise one. And there's pnoise two, and there's all these different parameters. And there's a description of what they do down here, although if, if you don't really know what you're doing, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The best way to know what you're doing is to kind of set up some way to visualize the noise and then just start playing around with them. So yeah, essentially it takes a position and then a bunch of parameters and gives you back a value from negative one to one. So this is my X position, this is my Y position, and this is a parameter I modified. So my X position is corner zero divided by 10. And the reason I'm dividing by 10 is that you can change the scale of the noise. Like uh, you can make the train just kind of seem bigger by changing this value here. Um, and you can do the opposite as well. You can make it smaller by changing the divided amount here. This is just scaling where the points are selected from the noise. Anyways, you see here, if I divide by three, the noise becomes a lot more dense and we get a lot more spikes and they're a lot closer together. Whereas if I increase it past what it was before, everything looks a lot more spread out and the train is a lot smoother. I'll switch it back to 10 and uh, run it to give you a sense of reference again. So this is what it was before. Uh, this octaves field is very useful for adding essentially roughness to the noise. I believe it adds essentially layers and layers of varying density so that it adds finer and finer details the more octaves you add. So if I do like 10 octaves, it's going to run slow. Oh, apparently not that slow actually. Yeah, because it only runs a couple times. But you can see my hills are very bumpy here. It also has the effect of actually normalizing the terrain as well. It normalizes it and adds finer details because of the layering the value selected, I think average out. And I, I could be wrong about the whole layering idea, but I'm I'm pretty sure how that works. I'm pretty sure this is how it works. And this is how it 
seems to work in practice. So yeah, but you'll see there's more detail. And if I turn down to one, everything is like perfectly smooth. So this is essentially the roughness of your noise. I'm going to put it back on two because that's where it was. And since this value is being used as the height for my terrain, I can scale that height to make my hills or mountains taller or shorter. So for example, I can make this thing 30 and my hills will, okay. I can't go that high. <laughs> uh, but I can make my hills taller. Um, and in theory, I could make them even taller. I just have some limitations on the way I'm calculating my colors and Pygame's gonna freak out if I have a color that goes that has an RGB value past 255 or below zero, but I can easily like scale it down. So if I make if I scale this value by 0 0.5, you'll see my train is extremely flat. I'll put it back where it was, where the mountains were fairly tall or hills or whatever. So the other thing here, this is where it determines the water stuff. So by default, it assumes everything's water. But if I get a value from the noise that is greater than or equal to zero, so this case fails and it goes to this one, it'll say water equals false. And that's just saying that one of the four corners of my polygon, when sampling from the noise, gave a value that was above what I determined to be water level, which is this zero right here. And if one of them's above water level, then I've got a ground tile. I also cap it off so that, or actually this isn't a cap, it's the inverse, it's a floor, who knows. Um, it, I make sure that the value can't go below zero, so once you hit the water, the terrain is flat. And this depth value is being updated with the original depth of the four corners and being added up so that when I have water, I know how deep that water is because setting it to zero hides the true depth but I'm adding it up here so that I can give it a color later so you get an idea of it in practice. Anyways, I can actually change the water level if I switch this value to like 0 0.5, but I can't go that high. So I, I just changed the caps here so that I can actually change the threshold here. I actually haven't tried this before. I just know it would work in theory. So I've actually raised the water. It actually does some funky stuff to the colors. And I could probably lower it as well. And you can see there's a lot more ground now. Ooh, there's, um, I need to work on the threshold here. There we go. So yeah, you can see there's a lot more ground here. And a lot less water. You can raise it by just doing 0 0.5. You see now it's mostly water. And let's leave this back on zero. So yeah, this is the type of logic you can add into the noise you get to mess with your train and stuff. You can say all sorts of other things, like you can have another layer here, and you can like offset it by some amount or something, so you're not getting the same value. But you can take another value, and you could use this value for something else. So for example, let's see if I've got a value here. I'll do V2 plus, uh, I'll do 50 plus V2 by 50. So this is a different noise thing for, I need to take off the times three. This is a different noise thing for the greenness of everything. And this is how you can like mix layers to get different results. It's not a very good example because you can't see it very clearly. Let's add it in here. I'm gonna change the scale of this as well. So it's a bit smoother. I take out an, the octaves thing to remove that noise. And as we go, we should see the colors of the terrain change a bit between like bluish green and kind of dirty colors and whatnot, and like a cleaner, brighter green. And this is what you can get by layering different noise sampling with different parameters. I haven't gone too much over the coloring stuff here. It's just t basically taking the different values it got to generate some colors. So I have two cases, one for water and one for not water. If it's water, it's purely defined by the depth, which is calculated by the sum of the values from here for the four corners. Otherwise, I got lazy and I just took the last sample of 
V and V2, so whatever last corner is checked is being used for the coloring for the normal grass. And it's just got a bunch of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and whatnot to just generate a color based on those samples. And then finally added to the lesser. So that's pretty much it for how this thing works. I will be leaving the code in the description so you can kind of mess around with this world generation stuff. This is a great tool to use as a visualizer. <laughs> if you can figure out how it works. But this type of generation is very useful in top-down games as well. And it's also useful for textures and all sorts of other kinds of visual effects. There's so many things you can do with noise. And I'll probably make more videos on this type of topic in the future. Anyways, yeah, the code will be in the description. If you have any questions, you can head over to my Discord server. I've got channels dedicated to questions. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.